gunpowder is sodden. Useless. together. But even seek equality, we sought only toleration, and even that was denied us. We intend to die here, sword in hand, for God and the Catholic faith! By the 9th of November, news is beginning to percolate through that the attempted rebellion in the Midlands has failed. That the attempted rebellion in the Midlands has failed. In the following weeks, the King's men would round up all those involved in the conspiracy. Like Fawkes, they were also taken to the Tower of London for interrogation. There have been few instances in English history where people have been more guilty of treason than the gunpowder plotters. People convicted of high treason were hanged, drawn, and quartered. There was some... Di In the January of 1606, the eight surviving plotters were taken from the Tower of London to be tried on the charge of high treason at Westminster Hall. The hall was packed. Even the king was here in secret. But the verdict was never in doubt. All were found guilty of high treason and sentenced to be hanged, drawn, and quartered. The first executions took place three days later at St Paul's, a couple of miles away. The next day, 31st of January, the remaining prisoners, including Tom Winter and Guy Fawkes, were executed in the palace yard outside, just in front of the buildings they planned to destroy. Fawkes was still so weak from his torture, the hangman had to help him to the gallows. He died asking forgiveness of the king and state. They were certainly brave. It's always a mistake to denigrate terrorists by saying they're cowardly. I mean, the 9-11, terrorists were not cowardly. They were frightful, but they were not cowardly. In the same way, the 1605 plotters were extremely brave. They were extremely... In the wake of the plot, the government's anger turned on the Jesuits. Having been named in the plotters' confessions, the Jesuits were now accused of direct involvement in the conspiracy. Father Oswald Tesamond, the priest to whom Catesby had revealed the details of the plot, was able to escape to Rome, where he lived on for a further 30 years. Father Henry Garnet would not be so lucky. He was captured in the Midlands after a gruelling eight-day hideout in a priest hole. He was tried for high treason, and in May 1606, he was hanged, drawn and quartered, the closing act of the gunpowder plot. In the short term, there was surprisingly little effect on the position of Catholics. They'd not been in a good position before. Uh, they were marginalised on society. There were penalties against them. And that's surprising that this feeling would mean that Catholic emancipation was delayed for three centuries after this. 
400 years after the event, we still celebrate Robert Catesby and his fellow plotters' failure to blow up Parliament, each November the 5th on bonfire night. But if the story of the gunpowder plot is a story of centuries-old religious conflict, then perhaps we should be asking, what place does this celebration have in the 21st century? I feel terrible about the burning of the Guy Fawkes effigy on Bonfire Night. I hate the sight of a so-called guy on a par. I'm very interested in the event, but I'm certainly not celebrating it. I don't celebrate torture. I don't think now that it's a celebration which is relevant. Western Christianity is trying to heal its wounds. And here is a and it might well be that we simply have to say, here's a custom, let's try and forget what it's about and let it happen. The last day arrived and thankfully the rain had stopped. The final countdown on our experiment to recreate Guy Fawkes' plot was back on again. It was time to load up our House of Lords with Hestons. Purple for King James. Black for the Lords. Bishops in red. Green for the commoners. The good, the bad and the ugly from all over the land plan to be in the chamber on November the 5th. With over 200 dignitaries in all, it was the makings of a massacre. But just who would have been there that day? So we know a great deal about who was in here. Absolutely. We don't know, obviously, exactly how things would have been laid out for this, because it never happened. Oh. Here's Archbishop Bancroft. He's the Archbishop of Canterbury. He's a moderate. He doesn't really like Puritans, because they're going a bit far. But he doesn't particularly like Catholics either. If anyone's running the country, it's him. He's going to go on to be the man behind the authorised version of the Bible, the King James Bible, if he lives. So basically, royals over there, bishops here, lords there. That's and it. down here, what have we got? Down here, you get the commons, the ordinary members of parliament. They're gentlemen, merchants, wealthy people. A lot of them want to be sitting down there one day. So they're kind of pressing to get so closer to the influence. Those, those who are hoping to do well for themselves are going to be right at the front. I'm not sure his dodgy skirt's going to help, really, to be honest. It's well, not... That's Francis Bacon you're talking to there. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is one of the greatest British philosophers of all time. Right. Guy Fawkes had lit his gunpowder 400 years ago. Would his murderous plot have worked? They don't make them like that anymore. Nothing in the breeze. No, I wish we could smell it. Yes, look, look, look. Yeah, See that yeah, debris? Yeah. The debris still coming down. No. That Bad. was much bigger than I expected. Really? <laughs> it's still coming down.
The remains of the test dummies were an eerie vision of what could have been. Terribly got oh that's all that It's strange. I know it was an experiment, we know it wasn't real in one sense, but it was a real explosion. It's, it does feel gruesome. It really does. It's done the same on the other side. It's just shoved it out of the way. And this back wall, which we thought might be broached, is gone. The king was, yeah, that's what you're saying. The king was about there. And he's very much not there now. The fence was gone. And, uh, not many of his friends are around, are Well, look, I mean, there's half a tapestry hanging off a blast wall at the back. <laughs> Where is the king? Charles intended to do a specific job within those four substantial walls. Done by bits going up and in the air would have been obviously very impressive. Remember, these bits of plastic would have been body parts. The thing that's really astonished me is the way the end wall has just been completely blasted out of the building and the side walls just pushed apart by the force of the explosion. You see, they just slid across the pad. Absolutely extraordinary, just the, the energy in that, in that explosion was really something. The overall impression you get is just such destructive power. The speed that everything took off and the floor must have been... But what damage would the blast have caused 400 years ago in the lanes of Old Westminster? Pieces of King James, his lords, bishops and parliamentarians would have been spattered over a gruesome hundred metres. This is the exact spot where we found the king's skull after our experiment. At one to two hundred metres away, we're still close enough for the buildings to be damaged. So say goodbye to your windows for a start, if you could afford them. At 400 metres, there would still be some broken windows and a rain of debris, mainly roof tiles and timbers, and lots of smoke. The sound of the huge blast would be heard at least five miles away. But what of the effect? 